Okay, let's, uh, let's make a start. Firstly, um, I'd like to acknowledge the uh, Wajak people of the Noongar Nation, the tra traditional owners of the land on which we meet, and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging, and extend that uh, respect to all First Nations people. Um, obviously, we know why we're here, so I won't go through the detail. Um, what to say about Adam as coach of our footy club? I first met Adam in 2014 as a um, energetic, passionate uh, coach coming across to take the club for the first time. Uh, I was a, an old retired player slash wannabe coach um, and joined Simo's panel um, in his first year and I found this high energy guy with a passion for teaching uh, and a real strategic lens for the game and that hasn't changed over, the, over his time. Um, within two years, the side have made a grand final. Within five years, he's won a grand final, and he sits here today as one of only three men that have coached our team, uh, our club, to have a premiership success. The West Coast Web was designed and come up through a need, um, and he dealt with needs as were required as the game came up in 90, uh, 2018 when we lost uh, Nat Nui, Shepherd, and Gaff. Uh, the side adapted around that um, to still go on and achieve uh, what they did in the grand final. Um, 11 years, 242 games as a coach, two grand finals, one flag, uh, a significant impact uh, and contribution to the club, which is important we recognise. It ends today, um, and we respect the last three years have been tough uh, on the club and particularly on Adam uh, as a coach. But the discussions well, I've had with Adam and I had with the, the board uh, around uh, this, it was time. It was time for a change, it was a time for a refresh of our program um, and to Adam's great credit uh, he always puts the club first and he accepted that that was um, going to be the position um, and he had no more to give. And so we reached this in a mutual space towards what will it look like um, for, for Adam and the club, um, understanding the situation we've been in. I spoke when I joined the club about people and about how people are the drivers of our club. And we're fortunate with Adam. Um, we've got someone who's got great respect around the club, across the industry, and has been a fantastic servant. Um, it's important as we say farewell to Adam, um, and he moves on with his footy journey, if he desires, um, that we pay respect for what he's done for our club and recognise <laughs> uh, the wonderful contribution he's made. Um, with that in mind, we've requested that Adam to consider coaching the side for one final time this weekend. So as much as today is the, is the, is the announcement of the finish, we'd, we'd love Adam to coach one more time um, come the weekend. Obviously a significant event this weekend with Liam Ryan's 100th. I think it's fair to say uh, that for people in the room, Liam's reached 100 games, which is a fantastic uh, achievement. Um, but for, my, for the man next to me, maybe we wouldn't have seen the best of Liam Ryan and seen what he's been able to do on the field. Um, with that said, I'll hand over to Adam. Thanks very much. Yeah, we haven't made that call just yet, Pikey, if I was going to coach this week, but... Um, We'd yeah. like you to. Uh, yeah, thanks, mate. Um, oh, look, at, uh, thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, obviously, um, a decision's been made and um, it's mutual. Uh, I feel like the time's right. Um, you know, I've been reasonably stoic over the last few years about the direction of the club and now it's a, it's a, it's a slow burn and it's going to take a bit of time and that my position hasn't changed, but... Someone else comes in, uh, a bit like when I took over um, Woosha back in 2013, end of 2013. Um, someone comes in with energy and gets to grow with the group. I think it's, uh, it's the right call. So uh, that's why we're here together today. And um, you know, it's been a massive part of me and my family's life, this football club. Um, we fell in love with the place straight away, with the people in particular, and started with Alan um, and Russell and obviously Paul as chairman, um, um, Trevor Nisbet and, and Don as, as CEOs, and uh, and obviously Craig Vozzo and, and Gavin Bell as GMs of football. So I've had tremendous leaders around me, and, um, and then of course the players and what they've given from the very beginning. Uh, I just felt like everyone had my back from the, from the first day, and I really didn't know what I was doing. Uh, as a 38 year old and um, you know, just felt so much support from the day I got here. So, uh, you know, it was a fantastic journey, um, one on which I'm very proud of, um, and the people I've worked with, the coaches, um, some tremendous assistant coaches over my time. And I just wanted to thank the guys who are currently coaching our group at the moment. It's really difficult the last three years, and the resilience you've shown and the commitment to, to trying to get us better is, I just can't um, thank you enough. So thank you to those guys. 
Um, oh, my family, I better thank them. Uh, feels like I'm retiring uh, <laughs> all over again. But um, yeah, we're going to check the uh, Disney Plus. Might get, get the flick, uh, kids. The money's going to dry up a little bit. Um, take my Visa card off your phones. Um, but yeah, look, we, we come over here not knowing anyone. And um, we've got so many great friendships out of out of this football club. We don't really know too many people outside of this club. And um, yeah, we've got some lifelong friends. So we really uh, thank you for that. Um, the future for me, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, we've still got passion for the game. Probably need a break, uh, to be honest. Uh, the sense of a little bit of relief as well as sadness is probably what I feel at the moment. Uh, and optimism for our playing group. You know, I, I still think there's some real growth with this, this group we've got coming through. It's going to take a bit of time, but I've got a lot of confidence. Whoever takes over next is going to drive your standards and keep pushing you to, to get the best out of yourselves. And, you know, good luck for the future. I'll be sitting in the stands watching. Um, and outside of that, I think, I think that's it for me. So um, any questions or comments? or Can I, can I also just add a few comments uh, expressing my appreciation to Adam for his efforts over the last 11 years. He's been an extraordinary coach and uh, he, he has uh, always uh, performed with the utmost professionalism and, and grace under pressure. He's been a great leader and uh, we, we, we wish him all the best. Thanks mate. Cheers. The relief, Adam, that you, you mentioned, was that an immediate feeling when the decision was made? Um, well, I think I think going through last year was 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 difficult. Um, just took took a bit of time and and fully respected the club final position. So when it sort of started to happen again a bit this year, um, I spoke to spoke to Don and it was it was worked out pretty quick, just about what what the long term direction is. So it sort of felt like the time's right. So. Um, you know, maybe he's going to apply for the job. I don't know, Pikey, you might be up for CEO and coach. But um, yeah, I think I think the times the times right. So the relief bit's probably a bit around the family as much as much as me. Adam, will you coach this weekend then, given the opportunity? I, I don't know. I just need to get through today. Yeah, it's, a, it's as much as you sort of prepared a little bit, and um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. We'll just work through it today, and we'll we'll work through that. What are you most proud of over your time as coach? Oh, I, you know, just seeing the players grow into men. You know, when I, when I first started it, the guys that have been around for, for the 11 years, um, I've seen them come in as teenagers and now they're married with children and um, really good values. Uh, that's probably the biggest thing I've cherished, I suppose, is the relationships and the, the growth in, in the young players and some of our staff as well, um, what they've managed to achieve personally over the years is probably the biggest reflection piece. Adam and Don, how and when did this decision take place? Sorry? How and when did this decision take place? Oh, last night? Yeah, it was, it was probably uh, it was probably a conversation about, you know, am I part of the long-term plans? And, um, you know, and then we went from there and there was just, it coincided with the board meeting today, so. There's no conspiracy theory. There's no. It's, this is not a. I sometimes think people think there's these big secret meetings. And that's it. We're, we're we're pretty open. Um, we're pretty honest. And yeah, there's, there's not much deception that you perhaps think there is. No, no, I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying you were on the news last night talking about the person who was expecting to coach the team this weekend, and now we're here today. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you want me to say in <laughs> press conference last night? I mean, but yeah, we spoke. Um, we spoke a bit last night after that. I did that at two thirty. So four o'clock, it looked a bit different. Did has there been a change in you over the last couple of weeks? Like you've always talked about it being a long-term thing, but that you being up for it, and then after the game on the weekend, you talked about your football mortality and being prepared to accept. Your football mortality. Did you start to come to terms with the notion that this was going to be a long build and you might not be the person to be played? Uh, I look, I, I was. I come to terms with where we were at a few years ago. I remember speaking to Niz about this is going to take a bit of time. Are you up for it? And I said yes. And then that, that hasn't changed. But um, clearly, you know, um, conversations and performances and all the type of things about the longer term look. So when we have a proper conversation. 
with Don uh, about how it all looks and we come to a mutual decision. So it wasn't, it wasn't that complicated in the end. Simo, um, first of all, I hope you do coach this weekend because it'll be something very special. Um, second of all, what was it like talking to the players once the news came out? Yeah, uh, look, I, I don't know how shocked everyone is, to be honest. Um, you know, there's, um, there's been a fair bit of tension in the last couple of years, in particular the last few weeks. So, uh, look, I'm, I'm sure everyone will be feeling different. You know, there's, there's eight or nine premiership players. There's guys who've just been drafted. There's guys who probably say, thank God. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think there's a mix, mixed emotions. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll move on pretty quick. You know, this will be... This will come and go, um, but yeah. We just heard fans cheer as you walked across there. Do you have a message for them? Uh, yeah, I get asked that a bit. What's your message to them? Every time I talk, it's to it's to them. Um, I think last year was really special. The last the last four or five weeks, when uh, I think they got behind the players and and you know we responded, which you don't want to have to rely on that, but. I think this year we've we've really responded to the crowds at home as well. It feels like you know they're really part of us, and we, we want to take them on our journey. You know, we we want to progress, we want to get better, and we want to we want to bring them along for the ride. Even today, you know, there's a thousand people out there today. It's just remarkable what our supporters do for us as a group, and um, they've been very loyal. So I appreciate that as a coach, and our players appreciate it more than anyone. How um, how important they are to our our journey. Paul, it was only in August that the board unanimously backed Adam. Uh, what's changed between then and now? You mean August last year? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we were, I think last year we were facing a completely different set of circumstances to what we've been facing in the last few weeks or in this season. We'd, made, uh, we'd had two seasons in 22 and 23 which had been severely impacted by COVID and injury. Um, we'd made a lot of changes to the football department. Uh, we'd made, we'd, we'd changed over our CEO as, as well. And I think last year we knew we had a good coach who had, really hadn't had the opportunity for two years to coach the team. Um, and we're also, but we were concerned about stability in the club as well. And uh, you know, when, you, when you looked at whether you should replace Adam at that stage, an overriding consideration was we had a great coach. He provides a lot of stability for what we want to do over the next 12 months. Or, and, and even further. Now, um, we get to this year, and I think there have been significant, some significant improvements in, in what's happened on field, certainly with availability of players and general fitness. Um, but we do get to a time now where I think we're all agreed that, that this is the right moment in time to, to look for someone else. Don, uh, if Adam is this weekend or next weekend that he doesn't coach the team, is there a plan in place for who will take over? Yeah, we're working on that at the moment. As you can imagine, things have uh, happened pretty quickly this morning, so we'll, um, we'll have those conversations this afternoon and finalise who will be the interim, yeah. When would you like to have a new coach locked in by? For next season? Yeah, well, we'll start that process now. I mean, I think... Um, yeah, I've, I've always been very strong on the fact basis that you, you deal with your situation until your situation changes um, and clearly today our situation changes so we're in the market for a new coach and that process will start now um, and we'll put together a list of people to approach and start talking to about uh, leading the club going forward. Don, the contract there were text messages that the club obviously would prefer to keep have been kept private to spill into the public arena. Did that have any impact on the decision or the timing of the decision? No, nah, not really. I mean, it's, look, it's, it, was a, it was disappointing that that was the case. Now, again, we don't know the, the, the context of those and when, they, when and where and everything else. It's, you know, the, the decision today, and you know, as I said, we reached it jointly with, with Adam, is, um, like, this is, a, this is a taxing job. And for 11 years to do that, the job, it's, it's got to the point where, you know, and, that's, and done it very, very well and given his all. Um, it's at a point where there's a whole range of factors and, and bits and pieces into the equation. Um, but it's just time. It's time for a, a, fresh, a fresh look, of, you know, an appetite for change for our program. And that's um, and Adam, to his, his great credit, has accepted that and um, we move on. But with recognition of what he's, what he's done for the club. Adam, you're a, a person who the game has thrown a fair bit at. You've always been very resilient through all of that. But the last two years, 2022, in 2023, in your time in footy, has there been 
a tougher period for you personally? Uh, I, look, I think the, the COVID, since COVID, there was a couple of years there for the industry, it was really difficult. Um, and out of all of the, the clubs, we, you know, I thought we had our list dynamic was a lot of families, very united, did a lot of things together. Um, and I thought that that period was a real challenge for our whole club. Um, we've got to be very organised here too with the travel and all those things. We planned six months in advance and we just got thrown out of whack and probably for a bit longer than most clubs. And then, and then we got COVID the next year, as in uh, we got hit early. So I think we lost, you know, that year we were playing some, some top up players that I hadn't even met until game day. Um, so that, that year was, was what Fitz was talking about, a little bit of a write off in terms of let's just stay connected. And then the next year, we just got hit with some really um, poor unavailability through some a lot of collision injuries as well. So I feel like those two years were were, were difficult for, from a performance point of view, but you know, I felt like I had to lead as best I could. Um, so that, yeah, difficult, yeah, yeah, um, but not didn't get any. We got some growth from it, you know, and I found out a bit about myself and about our group, and you know, yeah, so. A bit worse than 18, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, before I, f I forget too, I, I wanted to make mention of Warren Coford, um, who's a strength and conditioning coach for, for a number of years. And um, he left us last year, but he had a significant impact on my coaching career and I um, appreciate everything he's done as well. Do you think you'll be drawn back to the game? I don't know, I need a break. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So, um, you know, yeah, we, we, we love Perth. Um, but I love footy, so just see how we go. John, is uh, Dean Cox a, a target, number one target to coach? Oh, we'll, we'll put together a list of potential candidates, make some inquiries, establish people's interest and, and go from there. I'll probably, you know, I know it'll start. People will start speculating as to who, but, you know, we've got an opportunity with a, a playing group that we think's on the rise uh, to find someone who's who's got that energy, drive, passion to, to take the, the group to where we want to go. So. Um, It'd certainly be a name we'd consider. Don, you've been in the seat for eight months now, or six, seven months now. Um, how much of this is the first step, maybe, in overhauling the football department as well? Well, it's you know, it's I don't we don't sit here today, sort of happy that we're sitting here. It's it's you know, um, and clearly you know Adam's a, a big piece of the football department. The senior coach always is. Um, so the next appointment becomes important, you know, to who we who we bring into the into the role. Um, and we'll be, we'll be diligent about it, we'll be measured about it, and we'll make an appointment we think is going to take our club where we want to go. Simo, you, you touched on that you were 38 when you first came here. How do you assess how you've grown as not only as a coach, but also as a person? Hair's got pretty grey since I got here, although I did diet before. I was living a lie, um, I must admit. And then um, when I got this job, I thought, I can't, I, I can't live this lie. And so I stopped, and overnight I went grey. So it wasn't the stress of the job. Um, my 17 year old son's already got greys. Um, so what was the question? <laughs> um, what colour was your hair? Oh, have I grown? Oh, look, I've made some mistakes with, with, um, with people in my journey that I, you know, there's, and I've really grown in other areas as well. Like I think we all, between 38 and 48, you know, life completely changes with, with your family. Like our kids were all, really young primary school now three of them have left school and um so they've grown up here so I, yeah i i don't know i've just been involved in footy since 1993 i've been at afl level so it's footy's just been my life and the the ups and downs of winning and losing but also the pre-season um <coughs> the off-season the in-season the finals the not making all that's been part of my life so yeah, I'm looking forward to, to growing in other areas outside of football, but um, the family's probably been the biggest thing that, you know, it's been really good for us. How, how um, significant has your family been over the journey? What, what sort of support did they... Oh, I don't want to give them too much praise because they're very critical of me. Um, the this, this sledging starts, um, you know, I think Miller wanted to pick an address from a press conference for, uh, about three months ago. Um, she was... <laughs> Yeah, um, I won't go into that stuff. Sorry, um, but yeah, you know, look, yeah, they've been they've been great. Um, we're, we're tight, um, you know, 
but they've got their own lives as well and they don't live through my football career. Simo, it feels a little bit like you've been sacked. I could be wrong, but is that how you see this situation? No, I think it's a mutual discussion. Um, I think both parties got to be on the same page. So I don't think you need to worry about that. It's a, the way I see it is um, the timing's probably right rather than who did what and how. And it was a very, very, you know, mutual discussion. So it sort of came from similar places and we we walk away with um, obviously the club's best interest in, in mind. Adam, is there a moment that made you realise that you feel like it's time to move on? Um, probably your 300th article. <laughs> <laughs> Woodcock. Um, <laughs> No, not, not really. It's it's what, you know, uh, and you guys can be cruel sometimes, really. I mean, you've got to, you've got to keep that in check because we're, we're human and we have families. So um, you want more access to our players, treat them with a bit more respect would be a good good start. Um, but, you know, you've got to do your job as well and we get that. It's the industry. Um, so, no, there wasn't really a time. It was, it was, it just feels like time now. Don, can I just put something to bed with you because there's a lot of questions being asked because you're a unique CEO. Is there any chance you would be an interim coach <laughs> or is there any chance you would be an applicant to coach? No, I won't be doing either of those. That's done. That's I, done. I think I've got more chance, mate. <laughs> um, Don, you obviously had an agreement in place next year with Adam. Can you talk at all about how that'll be honoured? Or, or yeah, we'll sort, we'll sort that out. With, with, well, I've had conversations already today with Adam's manager and we'll sort that out and again um, honour that contract. Adam, you have spoken a lot about your family. I'm just interested if there's anyone else you went to for sort of guidance or feedback in reaching this decision or whether it was largely internal? Uh, largely internal, yeah. Um, yeah, I've got some mentors that you deal with. We all have mentors. Um, so no, not not really. I didn't really um, didn't go too deep with with other people. It's sort of uh, sort of live this life. Uh, it's unique. It's a unique life as well. It's hard to talk to people about it other than past coaches um, who have to deal with some of these things. So um, yeah, not really. Because you've played such a key role in, in kicking off this this rebuild, which is the biggest in, in the club's history. How do you see it panning out and, and what sort of advice would you give to the next person? The next coach, I don't need my advice. Uh, I suppose what we saw at the start of the year from our playing group, um, you know, we, we, we really started to click and we had some great performances early in the year. And whilst it hasn't, we haven't hit those heights in the last few weeks, I think there's some really good signs there with some of our youth coming through and our experienced players who can really drive and set the standards. So I feel like whoever the new coach just comes in, it's the platform's there and you know, it's, it, it just evolves, you know, you, you don't stay down for too long. Um, I think, you know, Don and the board need to pick a new coach they can hitch their wagon to. And traditionally, we've looked after the coaches here. Long term seems to be the way that we do things and it, it sort of pays itself off. So, yeah, whoever goes for this job, um, I think it's the best, the best club in the league, like really. Um, what they've done, it's harder and harder to win from uh, away from home. and. Yeah, got nothing but admiration for the club. And the Premiership to have achieved that here, it's always going to hold a special place in your heart. Oh, how good was 18? <laughs> it was just a, this is, uh, it was a fantastic uh, moment in time for us. I know um, you don't want to be your identity connected to, to Premierships, but our, our players, what they went through that year, the journey they were on, um, yeah, to, to you know, lose a few players and uh, really feel for, for Andrew Gaff and, and Shep and Eric McKenzie and Nick Nat, those guys who were a big part of that year. But yeah, to see the guys win a premiership and um, our supporters, it was just it was such a good time. So um, yeah, that, that, I can't wait for the, the ten year reunion. Don, could Daisy Pierce be a, a field option as well to take on the? I certainly haven't ruled, ruled her out of it. She's got a bit on a plate at the moment with the APLW season starting up, but um, yeah, look, we'll, as I said, we'll cast the net as wide as we can to find the best person. Adam, Adam, can I ask what you think the play group is capable of over the next 12 to 24 months? Um, oh, anything. Like, you don't know. Like, when, when Bucks left, 
I'm sure they weren't talking about Collingwood in the way they're talking about him now. So I, I just think things can... It's a very tight competition. So it's never as good or it's never as bad as, just, as it seems. So um, I've got optimism for our, our players and what they can do. Adam, I'm probably opening a dodgy door here, but what are some of the things you won't miss about having to come uh, No. No. Um, <laughs> Oh, no, it's not about that. I, I, like, uh, I'd love the industry. It's, uh, it has its highs and lows. So I, I, I don't think it's... Um, I think making decisions is something I need a break from. And I think when you get to this position, every day you make 100 decisions on whether it's the itinerary or who you're going to pick or your board, all those things. So I'm just making less decisions for, for a little bit of time and then recharge and see what happens in the next phase of my life. Thanks, all right. Thanks guys. Cheers. Thanks, guys.